various uh, tariqa boards and in this farman book there is a whole section on spiritual guidance and uh, molana hazar imam shah karim al husaini hazar imam said this in bombay on the 22nd of november 1967 i know that uh, this will not be a new farman to you but analyze it in more detail today now mola said it is important that if you recite or know parts of the quran you should be able to explain their meaning do not forget that our branch of islam is an esoteric branch of islam esoteric means that what is written is there but its meaning is not there to everyone it is there only to those who are part of our jamaat 1967 10 years after he became our imam azman so this farman needs to be understood what is maula saying all i saying that it is not enough to know the quranic words uh, in zahir in their external meaning or in their exoteric meaning as you we would say these are all synonyms zahir exoteric external outer meaning he says that we have to know and not only know we should be able to explain their meaning so this meaning is what imam is talking about when he says we are an esoteric branch and then he emphasizes this by saying esoteric means that what is written is there to everyone as we all fully know that the holy quran has been translated into so many languages and it is available in any bookshop throughout the world and muslims and non muslims and everybody is reading uh, uh, the quran so it the written word is there for everyone but its meaning the imam says is not there to everyone it is there only to those who are part of our jamaat now before i go on to explain the meaning of esoteric and bath in a little bit more detail with examples i just want to because we are all uh, obviously by our presence we are saying today that we are interested in the esoteric and in the real knowledge of our tariqa then it it is also incumbent it is uh, our obligation uh, that we should um pronounce this word uh, correctly so the word is batin and you know this word batin is uh, uh, is a quranic word and uh, there is a farman of maulana sultan muhammad shah alay salam in a book called the talikas and messages to the jamaat of africa in which he tells the jamaat he tells us that throughout history throughout history ismailis have been atiniyun and ta'limiyun so you see here by uh, knowing this farman you know that there is also a link between batin and ta'lim and we'll come to the word ta'lim as we go along so the correct pronunciation is batin or batini because uh, if we pronounce it uh, as batun then it loses that meaning and i believe that uh, batun uh, is a, a word which is used in urdu and it, it actually means somebody who is very talkative mm-hmm. batuni means talkative uh, we are well aware that you know because jamaat doesn't know arabic as a first language and because language also has a wonderful way of evolving uh, we uh, we know all these things but now we live in a knowledge society and that means we must correct uh, everybody's pronunciation say that the word is actually batin 
And batin has many synonyms, which I will come to later. Where the imam says that uh, the, what is written is there, he is making a direct reference to the Holy Quran, the final revelation of Allah. And this final revelation is going to uh, be here with us until the end of this cycle. So we have to uh, connect the word batin to the Holy Quran. And of course, you all know, I think you all know this uh, uh, verse of the Holy Quran where um, Allah says that he is the first, he is the last, uh, this is in Surah 57 and it is Ayat uh, 3. So in this way, so uh, I was talking about this Surah 57, Surah Hadid, Ayat number 3, in which God describes his own attributes as first, last, manifest, and hidden, Batin. And, you know, you'll find many, many different types of translations. And uh, you have to think about these two opposites, first, last, Zahir, Batin. Always in a pair. There is always a contrast and a pair. This is another beauty of the Holy Quran, uh, that everything is created in pairs, in twos. So here, and uh, we, the Jamaat, we use this as a tasbi. We say, it is a very favorite tasbih because it lends itself to um, rhythmic recitation and it is uh, wonderful. So we are aware that batin is the opposite of zahir and that it applies uh, to God in this uh, particular ayah and it is uh, a Quranic word, batin. So now... Before we go into the Quran, I would like, as I find that this is a very useful teaching uh, uh, tool, uh, that we should always try to understand uh, our faith from nature. Uh, you may all be aware that there is a uh, hadith of the, the Prophet in which he says that Allah has uh, founded his religion on nature, and uh, from nature, people can understand his religion. And from his religion, then they can progress to his oneness. And you are all aware how much emphasis Molana Hazar Imam puts on uh, the, uh, the fact that in Islam, the aim of education is that we should better understand creation. Allah's creation. So I want to take a, just a little bit of time to try and understand the importance of batin. Because batin is not only in the Quran. For instance, let's take ourselves because we are also a uh, one of the three books of God. Uh, the universe is a book of God. The Quran is a book of God. And the human being is a book of God. So let's look at ourselves because... Uh, we don't have to go far to look at ourselves. And we straight away know, this is known, but maybe ne not articulated, is that our body, our physical existence is the zahir, the exoteric, the external, the outer. But our soul is the body, the esoteric, the internal. So this is an example from our personal world. Now let's look at um, other parts of creation. Uh, I'm, I'm always fascinated how, uh, you know, things that we eat oh, every day are always in, in some sort of an outer cover. Take an egg, a chicken egg. You know, there's a shell and inside is the essence. Take a, a banana. It's inside the skin only when you peel it. You see what's inside, and the essence is inside. Uh, take peas, for instance. You know, sometimes you feel uh, this big pod, only these few peas have come out. Uh, what about the, 
outer, the external. We can't cook it. Maybe there should be other uses for it. I'm sure there are. Take a flower. And you know, the flower has been used by our great peers in their uh, uh, dynamic literature. Durama dekho. Durama dekho. Jem champa full mae vas. Uh, don't look far for the essence, the divine. It is like the flower champa in which the essence is the scent, the smell, the fragrance. But you don't see the fragrance. And yet people find it very difficult to accept the, uh, the essence and the inner and the bathroom. And then finally, I want to use the example of a, a seed or a nut. A huge tree like walnut, you know, it is completely enclosed and encompassed in a nut the size of, a, a, you know, one centimeter or two centimeters. A complete tree is, uh, is enveloped or encompassed in a nut. And when you open the nut, there is the essence. We do not eat the woody outer. We eat the um, nutritious inner. And Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah has actually used this in a farman. And uh, this farman was made in Zanzibar on the 13th of July, 1899. And he said, you eat the shells of the almond nuts, but you do not eat the nuts. Which is why you do not know about the special characteristics of the almond. You ignore the nut and eat the shell. You do not search for its real attributes, its real worth. And this Farman actually corroborates and substantiates our point that it seems as though many, many people are uh, uh, satisfied with the outer, whereas the essence, the taste, uh, the beauty uh, is in the inner. And so this inner is what we are talking about today. And from the examples which I have given you, that all of these things are, are in a way protected by the outer. They are protected by the outer. It is only when you open it up, the nut, that you will see the goodness of it. It's only when you peel the banana that you can eat the fruit. So in this way, the shell, the outer is a protection. But it requires people to search to get to the inner. This is the important point, that when we talk about the inner aspect of the Quran, it straight away requires effort, endeavor, koshish. You know, we have to work for it. We have to reflect on it. And that is something which is so much part of our tariqa. In how many farmans can we all quote where the imam says that, uh, you know, the intellect is a facet of this smiley face. Intellect. So what is the job of the intellect if it is not to acquire knowledge? And not only outer knowledge, but the inner, the essence. That is so important for us. Uh, while I was thinking about this um, uh, whole thing about um, outer and inner, languages, you take our languages, how interesting they are. Just one or two examples for you. We in English have a word, F-I-R-E, fire. If you write that word fire on your hand, you will not feel anything. It's only a symbol. But if you actually put your finger in, in a real fire, you will really burn and you will understand that that word F-I-R-E is only a symbol, but its meaning is the hakikat, the actual thing. In the same way, we take a whole science like chemistry. How many symbols are there? Let's take the simple one, H2O, hydrogen twice oxygen. 